Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity Simple Simon mobile game tutorial series. Uh, so we've got the basic functionality of our game all working perfectly fine, so now we're going to add a couple of little enhancements just to make it a little more, bit more interesting and fun for the player to play. And first up on our list is adding some sound to the game. So I have a bunch of sound files which will be linked down below the video. Um, I've got them all here, so I'm actually, actually I'm just going to create a new folder here in our assets window. So I'm going to call this uh, just sound, doesn't, of course it doesn't really matter what you call it. And I'm going to drag all of these files into there, give it a second just to crunch them all out. So we've got six different sounds here for each individual button. And we've also got a correct sound and an incorrect sound. So these, these six sounds are going to be attached to the buttons themselves, but the correct and incorrect are going to be their own separate objects in the world. So I'm just going to drag them into the hierarchy here. And just by kind of looking at these, you can also tell the correct and incorrect sounds are way more loud than the other three sounds here. So I'm just actually on, I'm going to make sure I have the two of these highlighted here. I'm just going to turn the volume of these down quite a bit. I found 0.2 is roughly about right. I'm just going to turn down the volume of my own machine here so we don't end up with a whole bunch of sounds overlapping each other. Um, and the next thing we need to do is add a sound to each one of these buttons. So I'm just going to add them in one by one. So you'll see a little sound icon appear over the individual buttons as they're added in. So we'll just add them in one by one like this. And now we've got a bunch of sounds for our objects to play. But of course, at the moment, they don't know what to play. So we're going to need to make uh, some additions to our scripts to be able to control uh, sounds playing. So let's go into our game manager script. I have it open here. We have, first of all, we have um, two particular sounds, our correct and incorrect sound. So we're going to make use of them first of all. So down here, we're just going to add public uh, uh, not sound, sorry, public audio source. Um, just for correct, we'll have one and we'll have another public audio source incorrect. Um, and that'll do us just for the moment. So we have our correct sound and our incorrect sound. So we need a point at which to play these. And we know that our player is either correct or incorrect based on whatever input they add. So we already have a thing in our debug telling us when we get something right or wrong, but we need a way to set our player. So where we have our correct here, we're just going to say after that play correct or uh, correct dot play, not play on awake, correct dot play like that. And we'll add our two brackets there and semicolon at the end, of course. And then after our wrong, we'll say incorrect dot play so now our two correct and incorrect values should play when we get our our game right or wrong so let's test that out now first of all before we test that we need to make sure that these these don't actually play as soon as the game starts so we're going to make sure play on awake is set to be false on them no i don't want to turn loop on either there we go uh, and then on the colors the color buttons here we need to do the exact same thing so we'll turn play on awake off on them, but we'll actually turn loop on because um, we want the sound to play also when our player touches a button. So say if our player holds down the button for a while, we want the sound to continually come out. So we'll leave that as looping on, but they won't loop forever because we're going to tell them when to stop in our scripts. Okay, so let's test out our correct and incorrect sound effects. So when we start our game. Oh, we haven't assigned those color, those uh, sounds. So actually we'll just drag them into place here like this. Nice and simple. We'll hit play again. And we'll run the game. There we go, we get a positive sound. So we got, what we actually haven't is a play after each correct button press which isn't really what we want um, so let's just get one wrong so there we go we know that our wrong sound effect is playing so what we actually want to do instead of having our correct dot play happen uh, as soon as the button is pressed 
we only want it to play when we get to the end of a sequence. So once we get to the once we know here we're at the end of the sequence, so what we can do is go back in here. Hit the play button and we'll run the game again. Here we go, we got it played the correct sound, so now we have to get we get blue and orange and then it plays the correct. Oh, I I went too early at that there. Um, but as you can see, that worked perfectly fine. So let's make the sounds play. So we know we've got sounds attached to each one of these buttons. So let's first of all handle making the sound play when the player touches these buttons before we attack how to handle the sequence. So in our button controller script, we're going to add a new... We'll just add private, private audio source that we'll call... Um, We'll just call it the sound, nice and straightforward. Uh, we want to make sure in our start function that we go the sound is equal to get component get component audio source. So it will find the audio source that is attached to each button because the script is, of course is attached to each button. And then when we we have on mouse down, so when the button is being pressed, we will say the sound. Nope, not the seven, the sound dot play. And then when we release the button, we will have it say the sound dot stop. Like that. Okay, so we'll save this. And of course, we always need to test things out as we do them. So we will wait for that to compile in the corner. Hit play. Oh, no, we've got. What compiler error do we have there? Okay, that. <clears throat> I've just restarted my Unity. That just seemed to be a weird Unity bug because the game is perfectly fine. Uh, okay, so we can now press these individual sounds and it actually plays a little sound every time you click it. So like I said, you can hold this down and the reason we set it to loop was so that it keeps playing the sound over and over and over again. So, uh, now that we have that done, let's actually uh, make sure that we can um, control the sound playing during our sequence. So that'll be almost the same as how we have handled um, our touching, or making the sound play when we touch and untouch a button. The only difference is we need actually uh, we need to make a reference to each one of these sounds uh, that we're using. So much like we have an array of all the buttons, we're also going to create an array of all the sounds. In the exact same sequence that they're in the array here and then we can just use the same way that we're lighting up a button uh, to just play a sound at the exact same time so we're going to need to go to our game manager and just below our colors we'll add a new public audio source array that we will call uh, button sounds like that and let's just hook them all up first before we do anything else. So on, um, we'll have a little list appear here in a second. I'm just going to lock this inspector so that we keep this open. Then highlight all the buttons and drag them into place here. And because they all have audio sources attached, it knows to automatically fill them in there. So I'm just going to unlock this now. So in our game here, we know that our first light uh, it gets lit up here so at the same time our light gets lit up we'll just say um, button sounds at position what the exact same thing whatever uh, the current position in our active sequence is so we we'll just copy this paste that in there so whatever that value is we will hit uh, make uh, make sure that that is playing like that so I'm just going to copy all of this again uh, so we're going to need to paste this in in a, a few different places. So um, when we move on to a new color in the sequence, basically we want to do the exact same thing there. We want to do the exact same thing here when we get to the end of a sequence and we're starting a new one. Uh, and then finally we want to do, not quite the exact same, but uh, when our counter is disabling the color, what we want to do is paste that in there and instead of saying dot play, we're just going to say dot stop. 
So now we'll save that, go back into the game, and it should be working just perfect, perfectly for us. So we can hit play and start the game, plays the sound. And there you go. We've got the basics of the game and it sounds it's it makes a lot more sense when you have some actual sound in the game. So that's how we can add sound into the game and next time out we're going to add a high score system and a way of keeping track what uh, score the player currently has in the game. So we'll add that in the next episode. Thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more games plus James goodness make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.